Hey everyone, Brian Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu, and I hope all is going well for you right now. I was sent a message by a subscriber asking me to comment on a BJJ Eastern Europe, for those of you who don't know, BJJEE.com, article saying BJJ Federation bans purple belts from teaching. And it reads like this, the Jiu Jitsu Federation of Rio de Janeiro has just issued a statement that it will sure, that will surely ruffle some feathers in the worldwide BJJ community. It's a reminder of one of their federation rules, which bans purple and brown belts from opening BJJ academies and teaching Jiu Jitsu to teach. You have to be a black belt. The Federation of Rio de Janeiro, also known as the Jiu Jitsu Federation of Guanabarais, hope I said it right, is a governing body of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the state of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Current president of the federation is ninth degree red belt Hobson Gracie. The Federation is the official certifying entity for the Gracie style of Jiu Jitsu. Specifically, it controls all teaching certifications as well as promotions to the rank of black belt and above. And here they say in quotes, Jiu Jitsu, only black belts can teach. Only the ones that have acquired the rank have the authority and knowledge to teach. Do not forget the presence of a black belt on the mat is obligatory. This subscriber asked me what I thought of this. Now, First of all, you have to think to yourself, where does this come from? The federation that Hobson runs, Grandmaster Hobson runs, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if he is uh, the continuous head of the federation because I know at one time he headed the federation that was the federation of all federations in Brazil. So if this is the same one, then this probably is the word. Now, you have a bunch of federations now uh, you have, if this is the original one, this is the one that was passed down to him by Elio, uh, if it's the same one. I think uh, Hobson took over after Elio did. So in Grandmaster Elio's eyes, Hobson is legit to take over. He is the oldest son of Carlos Gracie Sr. that's alive. He was number two. Uh, Carlson was the oldest one in the, in the firstborn. Hobson, who is also the father of, among others, Charles Henzo, Hyen and Half, and he, and from what I understand, he has 10 kids, and I don't know who all of them are, but uh, those are the famous sons that he has. If he's saying it, then it makes sense, and that's what it would be. And if this federation is the same one that goes way back, then it was what Elio's rules were. So I have to kind of go with that. Now, Kama Jiu-Jitsu is under the Jiu-Jitsu Global Federation, which is Hickson's Federation. So. For us, that's primary. Whatever Hickson says in his, uh, whatever Hickson's Federation says, because it, it, Hickson is the head of it, but it, it is a, he does have a council of other grandmasters and masters, as well as some black belts that are on there. You know, we fall under, or Professor Dave chooses for us to fall under uh, whatever federation is headed by Grandmaster Hickson. So that's where we are. What's my opinion on this? You probably all know that I'm not a fan of non-black belts opening and running academies. And the reason is because, you know, I just think to when I was a blue belt or a purple belt, I knew a lot. I knew more than just any Tom, Dick, and Harry off of the street. But do I know, or did I know then what I know now? The only thing is I'm better? No, not even close. I might, in retrospect, I might have known 20% as a purple belt versus what I know now. And I was offered at least three different opportunities to go in and, and open a school with someone else throughout my time in jiu-jitsu, mostly during my purple belt. I said no every time. I thought about it. Believe me, it's it's something that, that is, it's an interesting idea. And who doesn't want to teach jiu-jitsu, right? Because you get to train all day. And if, if teaching is what you need to train all day, then why the hell not, right? Live the jiu-jitsu lifestyle. I didn't choose to teach. I kind of fell into it. I did have some students as, a, I guess as a brown belt. Um, I had a couple, but I always ran them by Professor Dave. I didn't really do anything on my own. And if I did, it was with the understanding that I have Professor Dave's blessing. Because really, I do feel that you need to have a black belt to run an academy. If you're in an area that's remote, then yeah, I, I guess you can be a blue belt under someone and, and teach. But I guess the question is, if you're a lower belt and you're running a school, 
and you want your students to be the best they can be, how good can they be if you're not even at a black belt level? Now, I'm not gonna judge people who are lower belts that wanna open a school. The thing is though, is that in an area where there are many black belts around, it really doesn't make any sense to me for people to choose a school that is not run by a black belt. Like I said, if you're in a remote area and all you've got is a blue or a purple belt running his own academy, then if you wanna learn it, then that's what you gotta do. So in that way, with regard to the ruling that Hobson, or Grandmaster Hobson put down, kind of reminding people what the original rule is, I get it. But in Brazil, from what I understand, because I've never been there, especially in Rio, there are academies on every street block. So it's easy to say that you need to have only black belts running schools and teaching. What about a black belt that hasn't gone through a professor training program? Just because you train long enough to earn your black belt doesn't mean you can teach it. Teaching is another art in and of itself. I've known a lot of black belts who were legit black belts, but who can't teach for anything. Maybe on a one -on in a one-on-one -on -one setting, they can. But in a group class where you have multiple people who learn multiple ways, right? We call them modalities. If you don't know and you don't recognize those types of situations, you're not gonna be an effective teacher. Just because I get my college degree, my bachelor's in finance, does that mean I can go and teach undergraduate kids finance? Nope, I don't have a clue on how to teach somebody finance. Even though I've, I've gone through and I, and I aced my classes and got my degree with straight A's, you know, whatever. It doesn't mean that I know how to teach it. And the same goes for jujitsu. Just because I got up to a certain level doesn't mean I learned how to teach. Now, does Kama Jiu Jitsu have instructors that are not black belt? We do. Everybody needs to teach, needs to start teaching sometime if they're expecting to be able to teach. So I guess the traditional way was to earn your black belt. And then once you get to your black belt, then decide if you want to teach and then enter the professor training program. And then after your first year, get your red bar. After your second year, get your professor bars, right? When I was at Gracie Academy in Torrance, he had he had a junior, Horian Gracie, had a junior instructor program where it's a separate membership and you not only learn the art and practice the art, but you also learn how to teach. And I know Grandmaster Helson had an assistant who would come in early and he would teach the self-defense portion, but Helson would take over after a certain point in class and then run the class. We do the same thing here at Kama Jiu Jitsu. And we're not breaking any ground here, it's just the way we do it. Anything that we experienced going back to training under Elio Sons, then we're gonna try to emulate them. You know, we, we want to we want to be as true to the art from the way they did it as we can possibly be. One of the things is, you know, and as far as the school goes as a business, for instance, here at our Flower Mound campus, we only have one black belt. Whereas in our Irvine campus, we've got three. So you've got classes on Monday and Wednesday, taught by Professor Jack. You've got classes on Tuesday, Thursday, taught by Dave Kama. And you've got Saturday classes taught by Professor Fernando. So those are all the days we have classes and we have black belts running every single class. Here in Flower Mound, I run all the evening classes and we have junior instructors who are basically instructors in training and they need their own classes to run so that they can get their teaching reps. Because if they don't have teaching reps, I can't basically, when we get to the point of, you know, years from now when they become black belts, say, okay, now you're a black belt, now you gotta teach. Uh, what do I do, right? The training is gonna start all over again anyway. So one rationale is you teach them, as you teach them and they become proficient, they become your best students, at that level, with the techniques up to that level, you then turn around and teach them how to teach it. You give them the philosophies on what they need to address when they're teaching, how to, how to look and evaluate different members and see whether they're kind of like glossing over when you're teaching or whether they're fully engaged, how to get a command of the room, how to watch each group and make sure that they're doing things right and making sure you make the corrections on time. This is all part of the training. And as they progress through the art on their own and learn more, then they're gonna go back and learn how to teach that. Teaching is something completely different than doing. You think about your coaches, right? How many football coaches in the NFL earned Super Bowls while they're playing and then began coaching and then earned Super Bowl rings as coaches? I really don't know, I'm just wondering. Uh, but I do know that a lot of Super Bowl winning coaches, some didn't even play. 
right? John Gruden, who was uh, an assistant under uh, Bill Walsh, San Francisco, then went to Oakland, if I'm not mistaken, and I think he was the head coach there and then got run out of there for whatever reason, ended up at Tampa Bay the next year and then won the Super Bowl. First year there. And I think now he's back at the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. But he didn't play any any pro football. He doesn't need to be a pro-level athlete in order to be a coach. Now, I'm not saying that you don't need to be good in jiu-jitsu in order to teach jiu-jitsu. You do need to have a minimum level of competence. But there are so many other things that come into teaching. Like I said earlier, teaching is another art in and of itself. On the other hand, you can have world champions in jiu-jitsu that simply cannot teach. They just can't. They, they don't have it in their ability to, to teach. They, 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 it's, they're not wired for it. Yes, it's important for people to have a certain level. So Grandmaster Hobson saying no purple belts should teach. Given the fact that he's got black belts all over the world, all over the, all over the place, just in the city, and probably in Brazil, then yeah, that makes sense. In the US, in certain metropolitan areas, doesn't make any sense either to, to have a non-black belt running classes, right? If you're in, if you're in Los Angeles, if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, San Francisco, Chicago, New York City, Miami, there really is no reason for you to be needing to, to, to or be having a hard time finding a black belt to learn under. To the point where you have to go and learn under a, a blue belt or a purple belt. There just really is no reason. On the other hand, if you're in some rural part of Kansas where no jiu-jitsu professors made it out there, um, but there is a guy in town who's a purple belt under so-and-so and he travels here and there or brings people in or whatever, And he, but he gets his regular training in and he's got some people that he's teaching so that he can have training partners. And if he's willing to teach you, by all means, why not? If, if that's the only way you can learn the art, then, then by all means, do it. Right? Or maybe you just want to do it online. If you're doing it online through Gracie University or something similar, that's still not having a professor there. I mean, sure, you're having a, a professor in Hidon and Henner kind of take you through the steps. It's not the same as having an actual professor on the mat with you. But if you've got nothing else, then why not? In my opinion on this, it, this is a really it depends type situation. If you've got a black belt available to you, great. If you don't, then do what you can. And I hope that helps in giving you some perspective uh, on this subject that maybe you didn't have. In the meantime, just train. Wherever you are, just train. If you, if you have something, if you have someone available, train under them. If you don't have someone available, then go find something online and just practice it. You all know I'm not a big fan of going online to do stuff, but that's only because Kama Jiu Jitsu has a curriculum in the way we teach and somebody goes online kind of messes it up. It means I gotta, I gotta have them unlearn something, I gotta reteach them. But if you, have, if you don't have the ability to be at a school, then that's your only way to do it. You can learn a lot of stuff off of YouTube, like barbecue. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Hope you take care of yourself. Be safe, be injury free, and be happy training. Take care. Bye-bye.